will find all the subgraphs in the graph that match the pattern. This is the idea. So, if I say match n, what I'm, what I am asking to match all the nodes in the graph, right? It's, it's not a, um, like in SQL or, or in relational algebra in which you say first do the join and then do this. I say here, this is the pattern, match the pattern. And the algorithm will match the pattern, right? Here I'm saying just match the pattern. The pattern is n. So n is a node. So what, what will uh, Neo4j do? We'll go one by one through these nodes and we'll see uh, and we'll set these two labels to all the nodes. Because first I say match n. So it will return all the nodes. And to all the nodes that were returned, because they match the pattern, I will, I'm saying set, with instruction set, I'm, tell, I'm telling uh, Neo4j to add the two labels, English and Spanish, and this is the result. Okay? But this is important, because uh, everything, again, everything happens with pattern matching. Right? You are not uh, doing an, an imperative querying, like saying first go to this node, then go to the other node, and this to the other node. This, this is not the, the way Neo4j uh, cipher, cipher works. Gremlin, another graph query language that you will find in, normally in, for um, graph processing frameworks, works in that way, say with, with an explicit traversal, saying go from here to here, then from there to here to there, etc., etc. This is not the case. Yes. Um, so here you're using match n. Previously, when you created your nodes, you had to create n, yes. and then the student. You also had to create v, and I think on your very first slide you had to create. On yes, slide but uh, because I, here I don't need to to match anything. So I just said I, I'm just telling here to to cipher create this node. I'm not telling to uh, cipher to match n. I'm my, not asking to match n. My anything. question is, what is the v or the n? The variable v is the variable. And the end is the variable. This is the variable. What does variable mean? Variable is something that can take any kind of value when you instantiate it. For example, b is a, a variable. So it takes a value. For example, here I say create b. B is a handle. Say a handle. It's the same as, uh, for example, in SQL, you can you say select uh, employee and then you put e as employee, comma, person, okay. uh, uh, department, d. This is the variable. E and d are okay. the variable. So you then instantiate the variable. You, you give a you, you give, for different values of d, you do, you will uh, perform some certain tasks. So what? So you, are, you assign a, a, a value to this variable. So what's happened when you didn't create? A when variable? I didn't, when, when I do create? <coughs> no, no. I, on the next one, you have no variable. Here. Yeah. What does that mean? Nothing. It, it, the node is created, but you don't show it. Since you don't need to show, you don't need a variable. You don't need a handle. Okay. To to say, okay, handle this okay. and show it. Okay. Uh, here, I don't need to show. It. I, I just I just believe that Neo4j has done its job. Yeah. So I, I don't care. Okay. Uh, and for for this type of for the match with the others, uh, we use the uh, we use, do we use uh, the catch structure that we everything happens in memory. Okay. So uh, uh, this is why uh, you will. See, I mean, cipher is um Neo4j is a Java program, so basically it works in memory. Yeah. Okay. So and and everything comes into Java classes. So this is why sometimes you will see that. You will need more memory, and, and then there are some parameters for to configure how much memory do you give to, to Cypher. Okay. Because, uh, again, all, all of these are loaded into Java classes. Yeah. <coughs> OK. <coughs> so uh, again, now I match all the nodes, every node, and for, it, for each node. I assign the, the, I take the handle, so to say, but I assign the, the value to, and the corresponding identifier, for example, the node identifier to the variable, and then I say for everything that is in the node, in this node, add the label, which is English and Spanish, and and then the, uh, this is what I get. Okay. Again, now I do the same. I will delete 
uh, these labels from certain nodes. In this case, ITA. So I will delete these two labels from uh, which is, uh, from this node, okay? Which is discussed in this label. So I match, and now I'm telling match mean not all the nodes, just match me the nodes that have the pattern n column it and from all the nodes it will match this following some algorithm there will be an algorithm that efficiently will allow to go right away to this node hopefully and uh, then I say remove instead of set I say remove and then I remove these two layers but the idea here is to show you how this can be matched so you you apply pattern matching on the properties uh, and on the labels. Okay? So you can match the labels and the properties. Okay. Uh, okay. And then now I want to delete properties date of birth, name, and age from the you know, from the nodes labeled student. So this is a node labeled student, and this is another node labeled student. Okay? And I'm telling Neo4j to delete these three properties. And again, here comes something that doesn't happen in uh, relational databases or structured databases. What would happen? So this is the this is the uh, so that is age which is skipped from uh, from Spanish here. Yeah? Okay. So and males, which is uh, in, notice that this is not capitalized. No, and then n name and n date of birth. So this is a typical notation. N is a variable. N dot property is the way in which we refer to a property on a certain node. So n is a node <coughs> variable, and then node variable dot property will give us the property uh, of the node. And then I return n. So I return the, the, the result of this operation. What happens here? For example, edad or age, whatever. Uh, it doesn't exist in this graph, right? Uh, males doesn't exist either because males here is capitalized. And one thing that you need to keep in mind is that Cypher is a, uh, is um, uh, case sensitive. Uh, case case sensitive. Sorry, <laughs> it's case sensitive. So. Uh, Okay, so um, then what will happen? In SQL, you would have got, uh, got an, an error message, right? Because it, uh, S SQL uh, works like this. It parses first, then the first has a syntactic parsing, then a semantic parsing, and if the syntax is okay, but it, in the query we mention an, an attribute that is not in a table, or a table that is not in the system, in the catalog, then, um, you will get an error message. Here you don't get an error message. You just simply don't get anything because don't, you don't get a match. Because neo 4 will try to match. And we try to match exactly. And if it doesn't find an attribute or a property, it ignores it and does nothing. So here you will, do, you will keep this. So you don't get a, an error message for the age attribute that's not there. And it's not even in the other nodes. And uh, it won't even remove uh, males because being case sensitive, it says, I don't know males. Males is with a capital M here. So I keep this. So be careful because, and this is just a practice uh, advice. Sometimes you run the query and you get nothing and you are surprised because you think, how can this be? One thing you need to check is capitalization because uh, maybe you, you just, or, or, or even spelling, because maybe you, miss, you have a typo, you have mistyped something, and, uh, and then you don't get a match. And in this case, you probably you know, you will get some answers, but if you make a mistake in a condition, for example, a word condition and a Boolean condition, then it will return false for 
for all the conditions and then you, you, you will not move. Yeah. Is it possible, for example, to specify, for example, remove, I don't know, the date of birth to be like 2012? Yeah, yeah, okay, of okay. course. Uh, th yeah, then you, we will go to that. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, this is, uh, we are just introducing the basic statements and then we will uh, complicate these things a little bit. Okay, so this was, this for now. The, the other, uh, that was for now. Now, Let's see what happens with the edges. And this is how an edge is specified in, your, in Cypher. So you use, you have one node, one for the beginning, and one node for the end of an edge. In between, there's an edge within square brackets. You also have a variable for edges. Then you have exactly one type, remember? So you have one label for the, exactly one label for the, for the edges. And then you have property value pairs uh, annotating the edges. For example, uh, this A was a friend of B since 2009, for example. That's a label, that would be a label for uh, a property value uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the edge. A property value pair for the edge. Okay? And then, since these are directed uh, graphs, you have the arrow here, but I will mention something later that in, in, in Cypher query you can write this. So this is a known variable, this is an edge. So in Neo4j, in the graph, the graph is directed. So you, you will create a directed graph. You will always create a directed graph. But when you're querying, you can, you don't need to specify the the, um, uh, the direction. So you can write this, but this will match this will match this edge twice. I will I will give you an example uh, later. So in the query you can write this, but in the graph you have always a direct graph. Neo4j is always a direct graph, right? But in the query you can say I don't care about the the, the, the edge direction. Uh, okay, so, um, well, the variables work like always, and I will show you now an example of this. Uh, well, uh, I, I will tell you that. So, suppose now that we have four nodes already created in this graph. In this case, this, is, this looks like structure because uh, uh, all nodes are similar, have the same number of properties and the same properties. Okay, and now I want to create an edge type of type manager of having no property from this guy to being my an area. Okay, so what, what I want to do is I, I have this Jose, uh, here is Vilma, and here is Ariel, and I want to create, to, I have the nodes created, and now I want to create the edges. And this is what you do, and, and I will show you next class. Even when you do this in a bulk fashion, you will always do that when you do that. You first, you will first create the nodes, and then you will match nodes, and then create an edge. This is how you proceed uh, all the time. And for that, you need to do the, the following. First, I need to match this node, because if I want a, an edge between two nodes, I first need to find the node, right? So I, I, I need to find, say, and then I need to find Vilma, and then I need to find Ariel, and I need to assign variables to all of them, right? So I say match this. First, match an employee, a node of type employee, uh, where the property name has value Jose Pan, then, and, and then assign it uh, you know, um, the variable L. Then find, find another employee node, where property name has uh, the value Vilma, and then the same for A. Once I have the three nodes and the three variables, then I can say, place an arrow from N to B and an arrow from B to C, from N to C. Because C is Ariel and B is Vilma and N is Jose. So I want an edge. I want to create an edge between this guy and this guy and between this guy and this guy. And this guy. Uh, so, and 
then, uh, which is the type. The type is manager of, okay? And I want to return everything, so I, I return the variable, the th variable, okay? And look, see how this looks. So basically, uh, this is a good thing for uh, about Cypher. I have this. And I am writing this. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm writing what I'm looking in the graph. So it's uh, very natural to, to, to write the query here. And also, I do this. And this is N. So this is what I'm doing. So basically what I'm writing in Cypher is what I'm drawing in, in, uh, in the graph I'm drawing. So it's, I mean, for simple queries, it's very easy to do. Of course, you can complicate this as much as you want. But um, in general, uh, for normal queries, for, for everyday queries, it is very, very simple to do. This is very simple to do. And so this is where people use it. I mean, if you want people to use something, then make it easy to them. Hmm. Right? That's uh, what you want to do. Uh, okay. Uh, so now I want to create another edge of type manager of with property uh, from from uh, this guy to this guy. Uh, uh, from this other, this side. So I do the same thing basically. I first I place a match and I say match me these three guys, and then um, so th these two guys in this case and then create an, an, uh, an edge, and now I add simply this property, right? The property from, and the date from which this mm -hmm. guy was the manager of like this other one, okay? And this, this, this is what I, what I come up with, okay? I create this edge between this, uh, these two guys, and now this edge has a property. These other edges have no properties at all. And uh, what, what you do? Uh, to populate the graph is to do this within uh, a cycle. Uh, if you do this repeatedly, you first create all the nodes and then create the edges. How do, how do you create the edges? By first matching which are the nodes you want to, uh, to, to link. Yes? Uh, so here you're returning the two nodes and the relationship. But in the previous slides, you were just returning the relationship. Yes. Does it show different results? Like uh, not in this case. I, I, we will go when, when we go to a, when we do the practice. We will see this clearly because this is just the, just this. This just depends on the cipher inter graphic interface. When normally this is, but since you ask, uh, I mean, in this case, uh, here here you have the node, the node bit. Basically, with and an error, cipher, the cipher interface will show you B at the same time. It's, it's not a problem. Uh, but take this into account. Returning, and this has to do with the question before, with the previous question. When you want, well, if you return all the nodes, take into account that you return the whole structure. So normally nodes are large and also have the IDs and, and a lot of information. If you don't need all this information, just return, for example, n dot name. The query will be much more efficient. For example, if you suppose that you want to have a graph and you want the path between A and B, this will return, for example, A, B, C, D. But this path can be 300 uh, nodes length, uh, of length 300, right? 300 nodes long. Then, Instead of, if you return A, B, this will consume me a lot of memory. Because, again, everything happens in main memory. So, these nodes, if these nodes are large, and this is usually the case, uh, <coughs> returning this path will be costly because uh, if you don't have enough memory, this, oops, if you don't have a, a, enough memory, the system will be continuously swapping between memory and disk in order to show everything. So if you don't need the whole node, which is normally, again, the case, 
Okay, so let's say for example, a dot name, b dot name, etc. And this will be much lighter and much cheaper, right? Because it would only be the, the attribute, the property that we do with that. So, um, but again, this, what you see here, it depends on the on the cipher interface, because uh, this will matter if you you can you can do this also within a, in an embedded way. So, for example, in a Java program, and then in, then you will you can manage what you want to show, but this, what, what you get here, it depends on the cipher interface. And normally, so this B will be superfluous in this case. Because since you, once you, you ask for the relationship to be displayed, it is the cipher displays. The relationship plus all the nodes that are incoming are, 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 are going from, to and from uh, the relationship. So it's, uh, it will be the same. So here B is superfluous. It will be shown anyway. Okay, so um, this is it. Uh, okay, what's the the general uh, aspect of a cipher query? It will be match, optional match. There, there are much many uh, statements like in SQL. You say select from where group by grabbing, but in, in in when you have a lot of things more, and here the same. You have match. That is a pattern matching uh, expression. Optional match. If you add optional, then this works like uh, the, uh, the outer join in SQL. So it, it will always also return the non-matching uh, elements. The where is a condition. Return shows you what uh, what you want. Order by as always, and limit or skip uh, skip skips the first. N uh, elements in the result, and limit just shows you the first N elements of the result. Okay, again, you can also have return distinct, but the more complex statements, uh, we will be uh, studying them in the next lecture. Okay, there are other things too. If we don't need to refer to a node, in particular, so if we don't need the node for subsequent, uh, for a subsequent condition statement, then you can leave it empty. So you just write, if you don't need this node as a variable, just you don't put the variable. It's not a mandatory. Variables are not mandatory. If we don't need to refer to an edge, we can omit it, and uh, and then we write this. So if if I know, for example, that that there's uh, only one possible way between one possible way to go from A to B, then and, and we are not interested in this relationship, we just write we write this. We don't need to, to write the relation. If we don't need to consider the, the direction of the edge, you just use you don't you don't write the arrow. I will give you an example I don't think. What's the time? 45. Sorry? 45. Okay, thank you. Uh, so maybe this, uh, we will have an example next class. Uh, if you want to tell, uh, to tell Cypher that you can match one path or the other path, then you write a pipe. Right? So you can, if you have two different relationships, so student and uh, the other. Uh, manager, manager of manager of then may, if you want the, the query to go through this way you write student if you want the, you want the query to go this way you write manager of and if you don't care and you say give me all the paths no matter how they are connected then you write a pipe right and it will be then uh, if you want to express a path of any length you, you use star and for fixed length, you write this. Star three means give me all, only the path of length three between two nodes. And if you want to indicate an, an interval, say you can write star two dot dot four. That means give me all the path of length between two and four. 
Uh, and if we want just to limit one n, you write, give me all the paths of length uh, larger than two. And uh, so these are uh, other things that you can, uh, you can do in Cypher for when queries are a little bit more complex. Okay, any question about that? Now we are going into more complex stuff. And then I will see if we will do other things for next year. Any question about this? <laughs> okay. So this is uh, a graph that you should, I think you, you, you have uh, uh, in, in the, I, I have given, given to you, otherwise I, I will send it to you. Web, WebDB is the WebDB there? I don't, I don't okay. This is, this graph is called, should be called, if you have them, if you have it, if, it's called, WebDB. Uh, if you don't have it, I, I will I will check. I, otherwise, I will uh, send to Esteban so so you can have this and, and write this uh, this example. So suppose you have this this query, this cipher query. I have a, this. Suppose uh, these are uh, web pages which are connected uh, with each other. So page B uh, refers to page A and to page D, and page A also refers to page B, and so on and so forth. So it's a kind of a website, right? And I, what, I, what I want now is to show, is, is to, I, I'm asking for this pattern. And this also allows me to tell you how aggregation is done in Neo4j. So the group by, aggregation is done similarly to the group by clause in SQL, but without writing the group by statement. So this, is an implicit aggregation. Count P and count, and count X is, a, is an ag aggregation on S dot URL. So the only property here is URL in, in these nodes is the property URL. Mm -hmm. And this is a result that is given by this. Part. So this pattern will give me this answer. Why is that? So I have here A, and I say count P is nine, and count X is uh, nine. And uh, what I'm asking for is the path of length two between any three nodes. This is what I want, I, I'm, I'm asking to match. Where, sorry, where does it say the length two? Where'd you get that? The length oh, two I guess is, for example, Okay. From E to A and from A to C, yeah, yeah, that will count as a path of length two. Okay, kind of a self. If, if this is a, if this were a table, it's a self join. Yeah. Of the table. So, why is A nine and nine? So, apparently, it's, it's not uh, intuitive. The result is not intuitive, right? Because you have S here, and what I'm counting is. So you first may think, oh. How many nodes are incoming to S, and how many nodes are outgoing from S? But this is not the idea of, of this query. And why is that? Because, and, and this is why I, I, I give you this example. Because, again, cy uh, Cypher works based on pattern matching. So I'm not asking with this pattern, give me the incoming nodes to S and the outgoing nodes from S. I'm asking, give me all the paths in which this S is the middle node. So it will match all the paths that have uh, for, so S will be instantiated with all the nodes, such that uh, the nodes are not terminal. In, in this case, since all are connected, every, every, every node will be there. So think about A. A has uh, one, two, three incoming edges. And A has one, two, three outgoing edges. So how many paths will be A involved in as the middle node? Nine. Nine. Three times three. For every incoming node, it will be three outgoing nodes, uh, outgoing edges. So it, there will be three of this, right? Since there are three incoming edges to A, we have three times three, we have nine, uh, no, 
And this is what, what we count. So A will be in nine rows. And then they will be aggregated, nine and nine. Okay? And this is why this is the, uh, we, get, we, get, uh, we get this result. So this is uh, this is explained in this uh, in this slide. We have these slides. So, for example, the first clause the first clause computes path where a node s has an incoming and outgoing s. This is what I was explaining. Now. And so, for example, for C, we have A C F, right? A C F, F C F, F C F, B C F, B C F, E C F. So we have this form. Now we do a group by, but without writing the, the, the group by clause. So we get so this is a, this is the result of the match just concerning the node C as a middle node, and then we just do the aggregation. It's a group by, but in both senses, right? But so you don't need to, to write the group by. Uh, it's like you have group by count and count, and then. Uh, by S in SQL. So you understand that? Is, 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 is clear? Okay. So um, now I will present the problem because I don't think we have time because this example will take some time. Do we have 52. Huh? 52. 52. I don't think we have time to explain it. But at least we, I, will, I will state the problem. Uh, and, and I will show you the idea of the solution, then you can. Uh, Look at it at home and then uh, think about that and, and, and we we'll, we'll discuss it. So, again, we have this graph, web db, uh, and the problem is the following a page x gets a score computed as the sum of all the votes given by the pages that references it. So, a page, page a, for example, has a score which is given by the sum of uh, that, give, uh, that is given by E, by D, and by B, right? If a page C references a page X, C will give to X a normalized vote computed as the inverse of the number of pages referenced by C. So if one page references three other ones, it gives one, uh, one third to uh, each one, right? Uh, and to prevent votes of self-referencing pages, you Say okay, is if A references B and B references A, I will not, I will, I will give nothing to any any of the two. Okay, C gives zero to X. So what I'm asking now is compute the page rank for each web page and do this in Cypher. This is and this will require some other stuff that I will show you. So how we do that? And for this, we need to write, so to say, a cipher program. We need to write code. Yeah. Code in cipher, but it's not something that you can solve just in one state. And uh, I, will, I will comment on this if, uh, and, and see. Uh, if, just, ask me, just ask me a question if you, if you need. So this is a possible solution for the problem. First, I need to find out how uh, the value of a vote for every node. So, how how does how much does a vote for uh, a? How do, what's the value of a of a vote of b? Etc. Et et so, wh and what do I do for that? I try to count. I need to count how many uh, outgoing edges uh, go from a node. To another, to another, from, from, from one node, for example. So the match is PR, and I don't, I, since there's only one relationship, then it's PR, right? And I say, okay, the result is P, uh, the, 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 the normal result will be, for example, uh, P count R. This, this will give me the, the number of nodes that uh, the, of, of edges that are uh, going from B. But I, give, I want the inverse. So what I want is P comma one over count R. And this I call a vote. So 
for get with thing uh, that you have here return. So this will return a dot three 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 b dot three 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 so on and so forth. Okay, this will be the the result of this first part. If instead of a with we we have we would have written return. What does the with clause do? And this will be used. You will use this a lot in in, in your queries. With is with acts like a pipe that passes a variable onto the forward the variable onto the net to the to the to the, to the sequence of the program, right? So here I will say, okay, this will pass to the to the remainder of the program, the variable p and the volume. So this will be and everything that's before that will <coughs> not be known by this by this much, right? Everything that is not mentioned in this with clause will not be recognized by this match clause. So if you mention any other variable used before, then you will get an error, a syntax error. I don't, sorry, I don't know if you mm -hmm. see the, the parallel, this is a CTE expression in SQL. You define a CTE expression, this expression gives a, gives a table, in the next query, your table is the only thing you have. But if the inner of the previous CT expression is unknown. So it's basically the same idea. Exactly. OK. Um, the difference with, with, the, with the CTE is that this is sequential. So in the CTE, you, you can write many CTEs, and all of them will be, uh, will be known will be recognized by, by what's before, uh, what's, what's later in, uh, written in the program. Here not. Everything that comes after the width should just, must just use what's on the last width. All, all that is before, in, because may, you may have many width clauses. All, 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 the, all the stuff that is in, in all the previous width clauses is in null. You only recognize the last width, right? So here, I have a px now in the second part. px were not xp. What does it mean? This is the other condition, the second condition I mentioned. If uh, there, there is a, a self refer a cross reference between two, two sites, then I want to throw them up. I, I, that I will give a value zero to, to that ball. So this is what, uh, what then I, I delete. So I match. Px for all the all the p's all the nodes that are here, which are all all of them, of course. Then I will discard all the edges that are uh, self-referencing. So you can see here, a, b, and b, i are not present. Right? See a, c, a, f, b, s, b, c, b, d. But we discard, we match, and then we discard uh, the nodes that. Uh, reference each other. And then I, I, I just I have all I need. Now I can I can do the aggregation because I know the vote because this vote comes with P in the width clause. So now what I want to do is just group and then for that uh, okay I no I sorry I use the collect uh, I do want to introduce the collect statement here. Um, okay, let me let me just tell you that in the next class I will uh, I will mention the collect uh, statement because I did I make a change here to show a collect statement. Uh, so here is x, right, which is this p x, which I have here. X at sum of the gold, right? Then I I group by c c has one and two, so the vote of C, right? Uh, uh, C will return X. Sorry, no? Okay. Here I have, I have the result. Uh, so ignore this for for now. Ignore ignore this uh, this middle table, and I I will show you this. So C has one third plus one third plus one. Uh, plus one half, because it will group A, B, and E, right? 
and I have I, I, I know how much a boat of seed is worth. So uh, and, and all of, sorry, I, I know how much a boat of A from B and C uh, has a, the value of them, and then the vote of A is <coughs> one third, the vote of B is one third, and the vote of uh, E is one half. Okay? So I I now have here the vote of C. So this is this is what I do. And then the vote of A will be the votes of D and E, right? This is what I assumed I, I sum the votes, and I have one half and one half, and in the same way the, the other the other votes. I, I I want to, I, I now I will since this is here I will introduce you the, the collect statement I didn't want to, to, to mention it at the end of the class but okay. uh, so what does the collect do collect builds a list based on the on all the other so this that's an aggregation but instead of applying a function like a sum average etc uh, makes a list so here, if I write collect p dot url, what I do is for each x, I build a list of all the of all the nodes in uh, related to x. So for for a, right? I what what do I do? I have a, d and e. So I build a list with d and e. For c, I build a list for a, b. And e. So instead of applying a function, I put them in a, in a list. I, I mentioned this because we will use a lot the collect statement, but I didn't want actually to, to introduce this at, at this point. But anyway, this is the idea. And then you just you, you can. It is easy. Why do I why why did I mention this? Because once you have a list, then you can apply every function to a list, and it will be easier than aggregating. So you. you with this list, we, you can, for example, find the first element, the last element. Uh, you can count the element, the number of elements in the list. You can count, uh, sum the values of the elements in the list, etc., etc. So this is why sometimes you need uh, to collect everything in a list, because since list is a data, is a, an after data type, like graph, etc., that we mentioned at the beginning, then associated with the list data type, you have a lot of methods, a lot of functions that are pretty fine, pretty fine and that you, you can apply. And so, but actually this is not needed in this uh, example. You can drop the collect and then you, you, you will get the same result. Anyway, think about this example and then if you need the uh, next class, I will come, come back to, to this example and then we go on. <laughs> okay, so for now it's and Just a quick, quick uh, uh, <coughs> information for Thursday. I have still haven't found a, a room for Thursday, so I'm st you will have the information by email. I'm still asking the secretary if there is no available room. I'm asking a computer room. So for Thursday, uh, you will have the information whether there will be or not. Uh, Thursday, there will be, uh, as you know, from 2 to 4, the traditional uh, lab session. But we plan to have another second one catch up from 4 to 6. This 4 to 6 is still pending, uh, depending on if we, I have an available. I will, I will send you by email the information as soon as I have. I wanted to have it now, but uh, it's still in synthetic and happy. Thank <laughs> you.